Thanks for watching Film Buff, really, honestly. It's <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> Alright. Oh, hello guys, how's it going? My name is Im Film Buff. Alright, man, so I just checked out episode 6. Um, and I'm ready to move into episode 7, man. Uh, really quick recap. Basically, it was, uh, it was an episode about Miksa's past, you know, her tragic past. I finally got to see, um, um, how her parents, you know, died, uh, you know, and how she met her lifelong friend, um, Aaron, um, Aaron Yeager. And how Aaron, you know, helped her, uh, break out of her shell, you know, and, uh, helped her almost tap into something else, you know. Um, it really looked like she tapped into something else, man, because, uh, you know, because a kid should not be breaking floorboards. Um, and, you know, this is right after they showed us these shots of her. I don't know, man. Uh, these just flashes of things that were going on, what seemed to be inside her. So, I don't know, man. Um, you know, that basically that episode was telling me that, you know, she draws a lot of inner strength from Eren. And that if she has him, she can do anything. And that's where it left off. Uh, super excited. Let's get right into episode 7. So, yeah, I'm going to <laughs> あるみ。あの時一緒に死んどくんだと。エレンはどこ<笑> さあ、立って。マルコ、本部に群がる巨人を排除すれば、ガスの補給ができて。She's going to break down later. But she's keeping her cool, man. Keeping it together for now. とても残念だ。ここで指を加えたりしてればいい。加えてみてろ。やはりいつもみたいに冷静じゃない。動揺行動で消そうとしている。このままじゃ。いつ。そう、she so wasn't completely chill. またこれだ。また家族を失った。また。この痛みを思い出して。またここから始めなければいけないのか。いい人生だった。Oh, she's giving up. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, I thought as well. Yo. Dude, what the fuck is going on? こっちに来る前に。いや、僕たち身分反応だ。特に襲ってきてもおかしくないのに。格闘術の概念があるようにも感じた。あれは一体気候種って言うしかねえだろ。わかんねえことの方が多いんだからよ。とにかく本部へ
よし起動装置はまだいけるぞ刃も全部足したただこれだけはここに置いていってくれ The sharp blade. やっぱり生きたまま食われることだけは避けたいんだそそんなアルミここに置いていったりはしないあの時ただひたすら困惑した巨人が巨人を殺すなんて聞いたことがないそしてかすかに高揚したその光景は人類の怒りが体現されたように見えたから Yo. Uh, just just madness, absolute madness. Um, okay, before I get to the beginning, I have to discuss. I have to look at what just happened at the end there because it was absolute madness. Um, you, you'll notice I'm really smiley right now.、Um, I think both you and I know、uh, what the smile is for.、Uh, but let me, you know, let me take you through my thought process. So this Titan shows up.、Um, you know, just as Mikasa finally. Uh, gets back to her feet, finally realizes that no, 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 man, I can't just give up.、Um, you know, that would not be me respecting Eren's memory. All right, man, so something I mentioned or something I、uh, talked about in the first episode finally、uh, actually came to be. You know, I remember saying that、um, at this rate, the humans are going to require a, a Titan that is、uh, sympathetic to their cause. Fast forward six episodes later, Um, there is a Titan that seems to be, from what I've seen so far, it seems to be sympathetic to the human cause. And as Mikasa mentioned, this is unheard of. This is, you know, a Titan killing another one.、Um, so, this is the first time ever that this has happened that they know of, at least. Now, this Titan did not look anything like、uh, one of these other Titans. You know, the, the usual Titans have this flabby, drunk, Um, you know, look and feel about them. But this new Titan, you know, it comes in killer shape. You know, it's, it's like a slim,、uh, toned, you know, you can see the abs, you can see the muscles, the pecs.、Um, he's got like nice flowing hair going on. And it did not have that drunk、uh, demeanor about it at all. It seemed like it was in full control. It knew exactly what it was doing. You know, and as Armin mentioned, it knew exactly what spots to hit. So, of course, there's intelligence. You know, this is an intelligent Titan, man. This is not one of the coolest Titans.、Uh, it delivered a crushing, a crushing left hook、um, and sent the head flying off the other Titan's body. Um, uh, and uh, one more thing, as it punched it,、um, I guess because of the temperature of the Titans,、uh, the flesh、uh, totally melted off. You can see the bones, but, but it regenerated. That's something new. You know, these other Titans can't do that. Not that I've seen them, you know, so far. So, this is something new, man. This is something different. This is like an upgrade, the next level、uh, Super Saiyan、um, hybrid type、uh, Titan, man. Badass. Absolute badass.、Um, I'll, get to, I'll get to what I'm thinking here. But one more,、uh, to a few more things that I noticed. It, it kind of felt like they were communicating. It was just screaming, but it felt like they're kind of communicating, you know, through these screams. And another thing. As it punched, you know, as it landed that left hook, you know, it, it was like a freeze frame almost. And it was this effect of like showing us what's under the, the flesh, under the skin. And it was like the muscle, right? You know, and that's the look、um, the Colossus has, right? The Colossus、uh, has no skin. And let's fast forward to that ending, okay? First of all, beautiful song, absolutely beautiful song.、Um, I'm talking about the scene right at the end after, you know,、um, Mikasa told Armin that she's not going to leave him behind. Uh, beautiful song. 
actually, a, you know, a lot of the music, most of the music in this show is fantastic. You know, I need to pick up the soundtrack, man. It's it's really cool, actually. Um, but at the end there, you know, she's still uh, in shock. And she mentioned that it was uplifting to see this, you know, uh, strangely uplifting. I believe she said something like that. The next thing is key to almost confirming, almost confirming. I'm like 90% sure, guys. She said it was uplifting because it seemed to embody the rage of humanity. Hmm, let me see. What other characters have embodied the rage of humanity in these uh, episodes, in these past six, seven episodes? Um, only one comes to mind, my friends. Um, Aaron Yeager. So, I'm almost 90% sure here, guys. <laughs> I'm so sure that this new Titan, this new uh, upgrade, hybrid, new and improved Titan, who seems to be in full control, is Aaron Yeager reincarnated as a Titan. I don't know how the hell that has happened. I uh, have no clue how that's possible. So if, okay, so let's stick to that thought process that indeed this is Aaron back as a Titan, reincarnated, uh, reborn. Um, the only thing I can think of is uh, perhaps that, you know, this flashback, you know, that flashback keeps coming to me, man. Again, you know, I'm sure that was a significant scene because this injection, this serum, or something that was going on in that flashback was really, really hinting at Eren somehow being a titan. So I'm not sure if it's the serum that he got injected with or something else um, that could have something to do with it. You know, um, even though he died, maybe that serum helped him. I don't know. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying, man. Um, somehow he's back. I'm so sure that's Eren Yeager. So sticking to that thought process, let's look at how this is going to go uh, further. You know, he doesn't seem to be this brainless killing machine. Um, so the next step is the first contact, the communication. You know, that's the key here. Maybe this hybrid Titan can actually speak to the humans. Um, maybe they can actually talk to each other. I don't know, man. It's exciting. It's really exciting. Um, I hope I get my answer in the next episode or the next few episodes. Um, so yeah, man. Exciting. Really exciting. Um, because I'm really sure that this is actually Aaron back as a back as a Titan. So my original prediction was kind of like Bruce Banner and the Hulk. I felt that the serum, uh, or that injection, the thing in the injection, is going to turn him into a Titan. But then he would also uh, go back to being a human again at some point. But instead, Aaron ended up dying, and I thought, um, you know, the prediction's dead. But no, but indeed, Aaron did uh, turn into a Titan. But uh, it's a permanent thing, it looks like. You know, he was reborn as a Titan. Uh, again, I'm not sure how exactly that's possible. Uh, so I'll come back to this, because there's a few more things I need to talk about. So at the beginning of the episode, that, um, again, I don't know his exact title, but he's a high-ranking official, you know, the guy with the beard. He basically got called up by one of the recruits, man. Um, you can see, uh, you know, you can see in his face just the look, you know, uh, great animation. You can see, you know, and the sweat. You could tell he's super thankful. You know, the orders um, require him and part of his crew to be, you know, safe um, within the inner walls. So it's fair enough. But it was a bit of a cop out as well because he's like, oh, these are the rules placed on me. I have to obey. And the recruits kind of caught on to this and they even called him out. And, you know, he, you know, he got super defensive and butthurt. He's like, oh, if you speak out of line again, you know, I'm going to have you punished or something like that. Not the most, you know, not the most courageous person. You know, he's definitely not uh, chomping at the bit to get out there. Um, they showed uh, Jean. Uh, it was actually really cool to see him again, man. Um, uh, in this episode, I, I was really beginning to like him. And at one point, uh, Jean kind of regretted uh, something, you know. He realized this might be the end and that he should have just told her um, and by her, I'm pretty sure he meant Mikasa. Um, I'm guessing he, he meant that he should have told her that he loved her or he liked her. Um, uh, but then later on, there was a tough, really tough moment for Jean. Because, you know, they're up there. And he's like, it's impossible unless there's a few sacrifices. And it seemed like that's what happened, man. There was a recruit down there and the Titan got to him. And uh, another, uh, another recruit came in to, you know, try to save him. But Jean was kind of frozen in his spot, man. He's like, why couldn't I do anything? Why couldn't I do anything to save them? And he kind of realized that he's, he's made this choice here. But he also questioned his right to responsibility. And, you know, he was questioning himself. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm liking Jean's character now. You know, I felt like this episode painted uh, Jean in a new light. So I kind of, I'm starting to like him now. And there's two more I really like. Uh, Connie and uh, Sasha. 
you know, but both of them are still out here, man. They're doing their best as well. You know, Sasha tried to hype up the, the, the group a little bit, but, you know, she noticed that all of them had these looks on their faces, you know, defeated, shell-shocked, rattled. You know, she might be considered a bit of a clown, but, she, you know, her uh, spirit and her heart cannot be questioned, man. Um, she was trying to really rally the troops again. You know, and Connie's out there. He's uh, he's trying to help uh, Mikasa and Armin. He's talking to Jean. He's he's telling Jean that you know he can't just sit here. So both of those characters, I really like them, man. Ooh, um, a few characters I got to see for the first time in I'm not sure how long, but it feels like I'm, I haven't seen them for some time now. Um, Reiner and Annie, and the dark-haired guy. Shit, I can't remember his name, guys. I'm so sorry. I know it starts with a B. But those three, I haven't seen them in, in you know in a few episodes. So again, they only showed them for a little bit though. You know that makes me think here. Um, how come these three? Annie is definitely capable. You know she was one of the best um in training, right? You know she seemed to be really like ice cold and like a really good fighter, man. She was flipping Reiner. She was uh giving it to Aaron. You know Reiner and his uh buddy, the dark haired guy. I swear I'll get his name, guys. Uh, you know I know people have uh, mentioned it in the comments, but like I need someone to say it on the show so I can hear it. Uh, again, you know, so I can remember. Um, but yeah, they showed them uh, just a little bit, just for a little bit again. These are really capable recruits, so how come they're not out there in these scenes alongside, you know, Mikasa, Jean, Connie, Armin? Um, you know, that's you know that's a bit surprising. Um, but I guess they're in, like, different um, uh, squads, right? So they're not focusing on that squad. They're focusing on, like, this squad, you know, Eren's squad and Mikasa's squad. It would be really cool to see uh, some more of their squad because Reiner, you know, uh, in that training episode, episode 2 or 3, I believe, he was really cool, man. I really liked him. He was really nice to Aaron. He was really supportive um, and sympathetic. I would love to see more of Reiner and uh, his buddy and uh, even Annie, man. Annie seemed like a really intriguing character as well. So, you know, I would love to see more of them uh, going forward. Then, the big moment, man. Um, Mikasa finally gets to talk to Armin. And the moment Armin uh, hears uh, Mikasa call out to him, he, you know, he just panics again, and he's just, oh my god, how can I possibly face her? He's, again, you know, I mentioned last episode, he, he's um, getting crushed under this guilt, man, immense guilt. You know, and now he has to face Mikasa and tell her about this, so a huge moment. Uh, she asks about Eren, and after a bit of a pause, he looks up, he's got tears in his eyes, and right then and there, Mikasa knew something was up. She knew something bad has happened. Uh, but, you know, Armin uh, pulled it together somehow, and... He told her, man, he told her that whole squad, um, all of them died heroically, including Aaron Yeager. You know, he named all the members. Thomas was part of it. Um, they didn't show Mikasa's reaction, uh, like her face after that, uh, for a bit. They, you know, they showed us Sasha, they showed us um, Jean, Connie. This is basically all of them finding out for the first time what happened to that squad. Because, you know, up until this point, Armin was kind of like... Just frozen, he wouldn't talk to anyone, you know, and Armin, uh, he just couldn't stop apologizing, and he was so sorry about what just happened, and he's like, I'm so sorry that he died and I didn't die. But Mikasa's reaction to this was uh, basically in line with her character I've seen so far. You know, the, the breakdown part came a little bit later. Part of it was uh, her trying to show that, yes, I've, you know, this is a big loss, but this is not the time to be um, sad. You know, that's what she told Armin. Uh, to calm him down, right? Because Armin was facing a tremendous amount of guilt. She could tell that Armin blames himself for this. So partly it was to calm him down and f partly it was to show that it does not affect her that much. But indeed, of course, it did affect her, man. She, uh, Aaron meant so much to her, so of course it's going to affect her. But uh, she tried not to show it there. Again, she lashed out. It was also to rile up the rest of the people up there on their roof, you know, by calling them out. You know, she, she said that they had no talent and that they were cowards. At the end, that kind of ended up pumping all of them up. But Armin noticed that, you know, she she's not being calm as usual. She's not being that, you know, calm and collected individual. And that she was uh, trying to keep her emotions in check uh, through her actions, you know, uh, by going after these titans. And uh, he noticed that she was being reckless by using too much of her gas uh, and just fell, you know, fell to the ground, fell on like a rooftop and then fell uh, down. You know, last episode I got to see the tragic past of Mikasa and now she's like, I have to go through all of this again, don't I? Um, and at that moment it was clear that she had given up. She was done and, you know, the titans coming in, um, she did not care anymore. You know, she's like, I have nothing to live for. Um, uh, but, Again, something really interesting happened, man. At the last second, as this titan's lunging at her, she slashed and dodged the titan. 
and she was surprised that this happened, almost as if she was not in control of her body at that moment. I believe she said something like, I have nothing to live for, so why the struggle? You know, this is as she's questioning, and you know, she herself thought she had given up. As this happened, once again, they, they showed uh, flashes of these, I'm not even sure how to describe these uh, flashes, man. I'm not sure what exactly I'm looking at there. To me, it kind of looked like brain function or brain functionality. Um, you know, I'm not sure what exactly that is, if that's like trying to show her brain functionality, if that's trying to show something else, you know, inside. Uh, again, it reminded me of last episode. Remember um, uh, her first kill, her first kill, right? She tapped into something. It felt like she really tapped into something as that floorboard, you know, broke. Um, again, it kind of felt like it was the same type of thing, right? Um, same type of flash that she tapped into something or something deep inside her reacted uh, at the last second. As she's questioning all of this, uh, another beautiful moment, man. She remembers Aaron, you know, um, these memories of Aaron are rushing back to her. And now Aaron told her as a kid to fight, you know, you have to fight. Again, really awesome moment. And that memory of Aaron really re-energized her and made her realize that she is never going to throw away her life because she needs to stay alive so she can keep his memory alive. Oh, and as she's remembering um, Aaron and, you know, his memory and these flashbacks are coming to her, a Titan stepped up behind her. Turns out that was the new Titan. I just assumed that was just another Titan and she's getting, you know, attacked from both ends. Um, I, you know, I just didn't even think about it. I just, you know, assumed that it's just another Titan. As the new Titan was stomping on the, the other Titan, once again, they showed the flashes, but this time much quicker, really quick. As you know, uh, the chemical imbalance type, uh, brain functionality type thing. But this time, really quick, you know, almost like subliminal messaging. Um, maybe it has something to do with the serum and that flashback. And one more thing happened, um, uh, Armin. Okay, man, Armin is an amazing character, man. He's such a, uh, such a big heart, man, such a big heart. You know, in that moment, he's like, hey, it's more important that you have this gas. So he gives up his supply to Mikasa. Make sure to use this properly this time in order to save all of us. You know, and after that, Mikasa realized she was being irresponsible. She was being reckless and she was being selfish. And she realized her mistake. This was a big episode for Mikasa. She had to deal with the news of Eren dying and going through that pain. And I feel like by the end of it, she was uh, even stronger than she was before. You know, and Armin played a part in this as well right at the end, you know. Once again, crazy episode, super excited for the next episode, episode 8. Um, if you enjoyed it, please smash that thumbs up, leave your comments, let me know what you guys thought. Um, check me out on social media, guys, I'm super active on Twitter, um, I'm on Instagram, I uh, have a Patreon account. Once again, thank you so much to all my amazing patrons, uh, I really, really appreciate the kindness, you know, thank you so much for supporting me. Alright guys, I hope to check out episodes 8 and 9 uh, sometime soon. Um, but yeah man, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really confident that this is Eren uh, reborn as a Titan. Everything I've been given in this episode, everything I've been given in past episodes, points towards that being Eren reborn as a Titan. Uh, but yeah guys, thanks for dropping by. I'll see you soon. Take it easy.